this stage. Just going to ground the space first. Today we're doing a scalp massage and neck massage with you. How are you feeling today? Feeling good. That's good. So we're actually going to be focusing on Chinese acupressure points. First, we need to make sure that there aren't any abrasions or lesions on your scalp. And I also want to check the status of your scalp, whether it's oily, dry, if there's any dandruff, any itchiness, um, and then I'll formulate a treatment, an essential oil treatment based on that. For the scalp massage. Okay. Okay. Just gonna clip your hair over here while we work on the opposite side. I'm just going to use these sticks. I find that they're really helpful for parting the hair and really seeing what I need to see. Okay, so I see a little spot there and a little bit of dandruff so it looks like your hair is slightly dry. And a little, and it's more moisturized by the time you get to the bottom, to the nape of your neck. And I don't see any lesions. This side actually looks really healthy. Just looking at every patch and the hair looks strong, really beautiful. I don't really see notable or noticeable areas of broken strands or hair loss. But we'll definitely continue to support your hair growth for sure in our essential oil treatment that we do today. Your skull massage. Okay. Okay. Just gonna take a look at the back here. The 
ends of your hair strands are definitely drier, so we'll have to target that as well. looks really healthy. I don't see any spots, abrasions, lesions in your scalp. So that's good. We don't have to worry about that during the massage. And okay. check this side here in the front. Now the temple areas are often what I see, where I see rather, hair loss. But for you, it's honestly quite healthy. I don't see any patches of hair loss here. Okay. Alright. Have you noticed any changes with your hair? Um, no. That's good. Alright. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and make a little essential oil blend. Before we begin your scalp massage. Do you have any allergies to anything? No. Good. I'm going to start off with just adding a little bit of this hair repair oil and it has coconut and argan oil in it. most important ones we're going to use is tea tree oil because it really helps to cleanse the scalp as well as balancing any dryness so it'll help with the dandruff. Just adding three drops of that and then I do want to add a little bit of cedar wood Cedar wood is really helpful for maintaining the strength of the hair, preventing breakage. I'm just going to add two drops. And of course, I also want to add. And two drops of peppermint just to help improve circulation and hair growth in the antigen phase. I want to make sure that your hair is strong and healthy. And I might just add one drop of rosemary as well. And this has been proven in studies to also improve hair growth. Okay. Now this is actually pretty strong, so I'm going to add a little bit more of this hair repair oil in it, just to dilute the mixture. to be applying this onto your scalp. Then I'm going to start at the roots and just work it in. It does smell quite strong, but um, 
would be really beneficial for her hair. Definitely want to work it into the tops because that's where you're having the dryness. Massaging it into the scalp. So I feel like picking up motion here. Let me know if it's too much pressure or anything like that. Okay. For the remaining oil I'm gonna put into her strands just to help like the ends to help moisturize and nourish the ends of your hair as well. So you can leave this in until well, perhaps the end of the night or even cover it and wash it in the morning if you want additional benefits. I'm just gonna let that sit in, and in the meantime, I'm going to do a little bit of acupressure. So I want to know, have you been having any pain anywhere along your scalp or your head lately? Um, I've been having kind of sort of head pressure feel mm -hmm. towards the middle of my eyebrows. Okay, so right here where the intong, the intong is, okay. Anywhere else? What about around your temples? Uh, no. Okay. Anywhere along your skull? No, just my neck. Your neck? Okay. So I'll actually start with that. I'll start with working on your neck. I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna be using some peppermint halo. Are you familiar with this? Yeah. I'm going to apply it along her trapezius on her actual neck on either side of her cervical vertebrae and down onto her the rest of her traps down to her shoulders. use that as the basis of my massage. So you can relax your head down. So we're just going to do a little bit of a stretch, okay? Good. Back up. And then over here on this side, just gently. Good. around this side and just start with just kneading her traps.
actually going to tie her hair up for a second while we work on her neck. just rest her head right there on the hand. Yep, perfect. Do you feel the cooling sensation of the peppermint? huge knot right there, so I'm just going to work into it a little bit more. Just with the heel of my hand, or the ulnar surface rather. Use a little bit of this pain release. It's just going to help to relax this muscle a little bit. Can you relax your head again. Just going to massage that right into the muscle. There's actually an acupressure point right here too. Gallbladder point. It's often used for trigger point release acup acupuncture when you have shoulder pain. Okay, other side. And again, I'm just going to Add a little bit of this pain release here. And just relax. Good. It's surprising how such a small area of muscle can actually so tense by the end of the day. Or if you don't sleep in the right position, which I think you don't. <laughs> okay, good. I'm just going to do a little bit of traction, okay? We're going to bring a little bit of blood flow, I mean a little more blood flow, into these muscles by using this gua sha tool. Just to help it repair itself and recover. See, it's getting a little bit red, which is a good sign. And then we'll go on the other side. Perfect.
Okay. Is there any other area of your neck you'd like me to work on? No. That's all good. Okay. Just do a little bit of reflex stroking just to sort of calm it down a little bit. Good. Okay. Now we'll let your hair down. So that we can continue with our scalp massage. And there's a lot of meridians that are on the scalp. Right in the center is the governing vessel. I'm just going to make a part right in the center so we have easy access to this meridian. sure that I'm getting the center part. That's the governing vessel. Okay. I'm actually just going to flip over to that particular meridian in my book here. We're just going to work through every point all the way up to the top, okay? And this one right here is governing vessel 15. And it helps to calm the mind when you press on it. It also helps to clear heat. feel tender there? A little bit. And then when you go one twin above that, it's governing vessel 16. It also helps calm the mind and it dissipates cold. Press right into it. So these are all good points. If you're, if you feel like you have some anxiety and you just want to calm down a little bit, either acupressure or acupuncture can be really beneficial. Okay. Next, we're going to move up, governing vessel seventeen. If you find the highest point, it's called the external occipital protuberance, and just go right above it. That's covering vessel 17. And this actually benefits the brain, benefits the eyes, and also calms the mind. Blood that cannot really sputtering. Do you feel calm already? Yeah. And as you keep working up, 
Governing Vessel 18. This one soothes the liver. 19, just above that. And then 20 is a very essential point. You essentially take the tops, the apices of the ears, and go all the way up. Governing Vessel 20. This is the meeting point of all the young meridians and depending on how you acupuncture it actually has two different main actions. It can either subdue liver young, I think is one of the things, or it can actually raise young. But overall it calms the mind and benefits the brain. It's definitely a very important point. And then you have 21, 22, 23, 24. 24 is right at the front of the anterior hairline. So I'll just kind of work through each one of them. Good. So that's the governing vessel. Next, we can work through the urinary bladder. So the urinary bladder line is one and a half to lateral from this center line. So you'll actually make this into about thirds like that and then just go ahead and make a part again on this side. Do one side at a time. Just follow the curvature of the skull. Let's go down. I remember this meridian very distinctly because for my acupuncture exam at school, um, I actually needled a few of these points. In fact, I needled, I think, like three of these points randomly. They've been chosen for me and a lot of the po these points actually clear heat. And so when I was needling them with my partner, she had a lot of heat in, within her, so she ended up bleeding a lot, and I got docked a few marks because I didn't notice that she was bleeding so much from her scalp. So it was like sort of ineffective patient management, but I guess I'll never forget the clearing heat properties of this meridian. So I'm kind of just working down your inner bladder five here. Your inner bladder six down here, which benefits the eyes and benefits the nose. Your inner bladder seven is getting pretty close to the line where the apices of the ears meet. Your inner bladder eight. It's back 
here. Urinary bladder nine is very close to governing vessel seventeen. You just work right over to the side. And I really like the name of this particular point. In Chinese, it's called Yu Chen, which means jade pillow. Which is kind of funny, I mean. And finally, we have urinary bladder 10, which interestingly actually strengthens the lower back because both the kidney and urinary bladder meridians function to help the lower back. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Again, dividing into thirds and just making that part again. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. Making this part. Okay, good. Now we're going to go through the same points again. This time we'll start from the bottom. You're in your bladder ten. And you'll find that every single acupressure point actually is in a little depression. So that's a good way to realize whether you're actually on the point. Although even if you're close to it, you will still be able to exert some effect. In our temples, where we have the tayam, and you also want to work on your master muscles because do you grind your teeth at night? Doing a bit of a 
jaw massage here at the masseter muscle. I'm gonna apply a little bit of pain release just to help relax that muscle as well. It's definitely a lot tighter on the right side. Okay. I'm gonna work on both sides now. Good. And to end off the massage, I'm just going to go over all of the scalp again, just kind of working through any residual oils that haven't sunk in yet. I'm trying to stimulate all those points that we did earlier as well. Slight stroking to sort of ground ourselves as we end the massage. Right. Okay, how are you feeling? Feeling very relaxed? Perfect. And now you can go off to the rest of your day.